what is the single most important interpersonal relationship skill? I'm pretty sure that it's active listening. And so lately I've read a few books on the topic and today I'll talk about two of them. One is called You're Not Listening by Kate Murphy. And the other one is called Active Listening Techniques by Nick Solly Leonardo. If you had to read one of the two, I would go with You're Not Listening because it's more of a complete overview of the subject, while uh, the other book, The Techniques, is what it sounds like. Active Listening Techniques is a list of 30 techniques. Still worthwhile, though. If you're trying to do this and you're listening to that audiobook, I listen to it as an audiobook, then it'll kind of give you some ideas and prompt you on how to do this. Essentially, the Kate Murphy You're Not Listening book gives an overview of active listening. There's a lot of discussion of how relationships are impacted by listening. And obviously, in marriage counseling and other relationship-focused counseling, the people often cite communication problems as a major problem and listening as a skill that's important. She also talks about the uh, specific strategies to overcome problems like distractions and things that, that prevent us from active listening. And then she she acknowledges, which is nice, that active listening is actually hard. It's actually exhausting. So I should define what we mean by active listening. What is active listening? That's when you're listening to someone and really engaging in what they have to say. And Murphy makes the point that often when we're listening to someone in a conversation, what we're thinking about is the next thing that we're going to say, where we're really spacing waiting for them to get through their little bit so we can get to our lines, which we're really focused on. It wasn't these books, but there was some other book I read recently that said that it's a perfectionist technique or tendency that leads you to move ahead in the conversation and think about what you're going to say next because you want so badly to get it right. And so you're thinking about that when really you should be listening to the other person. Another thing that these books emphasize is that when you're not active listening, when you're just nodding along, waiting for your turn, the other person can tell. It's all over your face. You have a vacant look in your eyes. Like, you're not fooling anyone. So active listening is vastly better. And uh, in both books, they emphasize that active listening means listening to understand. Like, you're really plugged in, hearing what the other person says, and then trying to understand their perspective as opposed to promoting your own perspective or, you know, thinking about what, what you're going to say next or thinking about something completely unrelated. You're actually there with the person. And we're all going to have lapses. The, uh, the reason the Active Listening Techniques book is so good is it gives you 30 different things to work on that will help you improve on this. And it really does take constant improvement. One thing I've taken away, I don't think it was a specific technique in the Leonardo book, but this is what I've been doing lately. If I'm in a conversation and I find myself kind of getting ready or excited to say the next thing I want to say, instead of doing that, I'll abandon it and ask a follow-up question about whatever the other person was saying. And this really does get me into the mode of active listening and making sure that the purpose of the conversation is to understand the other person. That's another thing I took away from this is that the purpose of conversation is different for different people. Both of these books maintain that the purpose of conversation should be to improve relationships by really understanding the other person. And I think that is probably the highest, best goal for communication, for conversations. But there are many other things you could be doing. For example, you might be trying to impress the other person or... What I often do is I might be like testing ideas. The reason I'm talking to this person, is it's not about the person, it's about the idea and I just need another perspective to work me through different ideas. That to me is a great reason to, to engage in conversation, but it's not always gonna meet the needs of the other person. So ideally we should engage in active listening and really be trying to, to listen to what the other person is telling us. The, uh, the techniques, the actual practical techniques by Leonardo, like I say, are things you can work through just they didn't all hit for me, but there were a few techniques mixed in there that were helpful. And these are probably both books I'll listen to again at some point. So I recommend them both.